talk to you a little bit about this uh, chemosensitivity test because it's kind of interesting. Um, there's really there's there's really a couple of concepts involved. You know, has anybody heard of doing like a, a, a culture to culture and sensitivity when they have to take antibiotics to find out what the antibiotic is going to be sensitive to? So if they're going to if certain if a person has a urinary tract infection, they take a culture and sensitivity of the urine to determine which antibiotic is going to work. And what they do is they actually grow out the organisms on a plate and they try different antibiotics against that organism and they say it's going to be sensitive to this, it's not going to be sensitive to this because 10 people, 100 people can have the same infection in the same area, the same even bacteria. They may all be a uh, certain gram-negative organism, say it's E. coli, may all have an E. coli organism and yet they may be sensitive to different drugs because that E. coli organism is a little different genetically. So people do this culture and sensitivity to ter determine the right drug to use. Now, it's the same principle with chemosensitivity. In, in, in general, uh, oncologists have always, oncologists have always uh, used clinical trials and basically trial and error to determine what drug to use, what chemo drug to use for a cancer patient. For example, a breast cancer, well, say, let's say a colon cancer patient. I want to talk to you about colon cancer specifically because that's how we got into chemosensitivity testing about five and a half years ago. Colon cancer, basically, there is trials that have been done on drugs in the past, and that's usually what determines, based on the stage that a person is at, that determines what drugs are going to be used. And it's only really a few drugs that are generally used for colon cancer. And once the patient goes through, this, through these few drugs, there's really nothing left. They have nothing left to offer. But those drugs are not chosen because that colon cancer patient's colon cancer cells were examined and tested to see which of those drugs is going to work. It's basically the choice of drugs is based on prior clinical trials with other colon cancer patients. So it's almost a trial and error. I mean, the, the truth is that Statistically speaking, yes, you might have a good chance of responding to one of these protocols based on prior testing, but we don't know exactly what this patient's cells are going to respond to. So it's this, it's, it would be like taking an antibiotic and just giving it to a person, and if it doesn't work, then you try another one, and then you try another one, and you try another one. So what, what, I ha what happened to me fi about five and a half years ago, a patient came to me with colon cancer who had been through Memorial Sloan Kettering, spent a year and a half getting different colon cancer drugs, and the doctor said, there's nothing more I can do for you. And he's an intelligent guy, and he went to the internet, and he looked up you know, various things, and he came across a company in Germany which was doing chemosensitivity testing. And he printed out the website, and he brought it to his doctor at Sloan Kettering, and he said, Doc, you know, um, you told me there's nothing more you can do for me, but I found this. Will you test me based on this? Obviously, I'll have to pay for it, and give me a protocol based on what the results are. So the doctor told him, uh, there's no data on this. No, I won't do it. So he came to me with the same request. And because we think outside the box, we said, all right, you know, I mean, I, there's a patient in front of me. He's going to die. But what do you do? You say, no, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I had no knowledge of this test. I had no, seen no studies on it. But I said, yes, sure, we'll do it. So we sent the test away, and the test results came back. And sure enough, every drug that the patient had been on, all the, quotes accepted colon cancer drugs were going to, not going to respond based on this testing. And that's, in fact, what happened to them. None of the drugs worked at all. But what did show up was that there is a couple of drugs like, that were usually used for lung cancer and one or two that were used for uh, breast cancer but that would not, use, not really stand the colon cancer drugs. Let me give you an aside. There's no such thing as a cancer-specific chemo drug. It's just drugs that haven't been tried on it. The chemo drugs are really nonspecific. They're cell killers. And if, you had tr if they were tried on colon cancer and they worked in the past, then now they're a colon cancer drug. I can tell you that there's a colon cancer drug that's now being used as a lung cancer drug because they, somebody did a clinical trial on it in lung cancer. So you know, areno tecan, which, you know, basically was mostly a colon cancer drug. So anyway, we tried the patient on this new protocol, completely outside the box, totally off-label use of these drugs. And sure enough, the patient responded. 
Now, you know, I mean, I, it, was, it was something that happened in front of my eyes, and I saw the patient respond. He improved, the tumor shrank, he felt better. It was a dramatic response. And I said, well, that was something I have to take note of. Now, here's a, a doctor who cares about his patients, one seeing a, a trial of one. It's not a, a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. I can't publish that information. Nobody would even be interested in that information.